Well, it's almost time to welcome tonight's guests. One is the very funny Frank Skinner. And the other is the formidable Emma Greed, who is the latest guest dragon to enter the den. But we'll leave it to Emma to tell you a bit more about herself. My name's Emma Greed. I am an entrepreneur and I'm from East London. The dragons have a special guest. Emma, welcome. So happy to be here. It's a bit major, isn't it? I'm the CEO and founder of Good American with my business partner, Chloe Kardashian. On our first day of business, we sold a million dollars worth of jeans and that was an incredible start to what I knew would be an amazing journey. I'm also the founding partner of Skims alongside Kim Kardashian. That business is valued at $3.2 billion. Real gold? Oh, come on. It was a really proud moment for me to make the Forbes richest self-made women list. Underline, self-made. Oh, welcome to the show tonight. It's good to see you both. Thank you. Um, now then, you have got some credentials, Emma, as we saw there. You mix in Hollywood circles. What it's like mixing with Frank Skinner next to you on the sofa. Mm. I mean, I can barely contain myself. Yes. <laughs> 3.2 billion. I mean, it's not all mine. No, but that's, that's exciting. It's good to yeah. go in, isn't it? It is. It's yeah. all right, it'll I, do. I'll tell you what else is exciting, Frank. You've got a motorcycle waiting outside the studio right now. Yeah, when I was a, a young man, I used to watch... Terry Wogan used to have a live show on week, weekday nights. And occasionally someone would say, yes, I have to get, um, get to the West End now. Yeah. And I used to think, what lives these people lead? <laughs> and now it's me. There you yeah. are. I'm on a bike to the West End. I'm on at the Gielgud Theatre tonight. Good on you. Nice. Well, Emma, we're going to see you in action on The Den tomorrow evening. Um, now, you've already worked on the US version of the show. What drew you to the, to the UK version? You know, I think it's just like, first of all, I wanted to do something here because my nan, who lives in Canvey Island, can't watch Shark Tank. So it's no good, really. It just feels like dollars, like it's like made up to me. So I don't know. I just felt like doing something in the UK would be amazing. and My family get to see it. Nice. Yeah, nice to be home, isn't it? Um, let's have a look at Emma sharing her business expertise with a budding entrepreneur. From my view, a couple of the signs of a good entrepreneur is learning fast, pivoting even faster. Are you willing to actually take the advice from this group of people here, focus on your product range, not look to the app, and just focus in on what it is that you do really well? A absolutely, I came here because I want this business to win. That's exactly what I wanted you to say, like 100% hands down. Brilliant. <laughs> Emma, when people first walk out and they see you all sitting there, they yeah. must be terrified. Oh, my goodness. They just absolutely must be. I mean, even me going in there, it's such a familiar scene. I've been watching that show since I was a kid. Yeah. So I just find the whole thing must be so intimidating. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot coming and pitching your business when it's not on the telly. But, you know, this is difficult. Do you think that fear can affect their pitch? Oh, 100%. Yeah. Also, you know, you've got people firing questions at you and you need to be, like, on it. You've got to have everything, like, all your ducks in a row. Yeah. Oh, God, because she looks scared, didn't she? Does. she, she does. answered <laughs> the question. But it does. I know. It does look like an S&M dungeon. That doesn't help, does it? Do they... Well, Frank, it's have... just atmospheric, isn't it? They should have plastered those walls after all these years. <laughs> It's supposed to be intimidating. I think yeah. that's the point. Yeah, but post-nuclear war, that's going to make people look edgy. It's on a budget, see. Oh, he God. said it. That's it. Um, <laughs> now, Emma, lots of people will be watching at home super inspired and thinking, how did you get to where you are? Because, of course, school wasn't the thing for you, wasn't it? It, oh, it didn't say that again. for you. <laughs> but, you know, but since then, of course, you've gone on to amazing things. What do you put your success down to? You know, I feel like it's hard work, of course, but a little bit of luck, you know, and I feel like luck is when preparation and opportunity kind of meet, and I've just been very, very prepared for whenever my opportunity would come. OK, That's we have got some questions. Okay? Oh, you do? People okay. are going, oh, yeah. sort me out. Emma, Natalie is a holistic therapist and Reiki master. Her question is, how do I best promote oh. my business? Well, you know, it's so easy these days because we've got social media, so you don't even need any money. you just got to get up there and hope that someone believes the same thing that you do. And so that's what I do so much for my brand. It's best when you create something that's within, you know, your sphere of excellence. Yeah. So you just get on there and tell people why they need it. Honestly, authentically, and without any, you know, messing around. Yeah. Mm. What was your first success story? And, and 
Is that what led you to believe you could do this? Yeah, you know what? It's like I've had a lot of failures, and I think that's the honest truth. Yeah. I've done so many things that haven't worked out that I've just kind of taken pieces from all of those things. And, you know, everyone gets a little bit of luck, and then you just got to be prepared to put the hard graft in, and that's what I've done. But I always think, like, solving a problem, if you have a problem and you solve it, the chances are other people are going to have the same problems. And that's what I've done. I created businesses that were for all women, regardless of what you look like, what your size is, yeah. and people love that. Frank, Absolutely. you've got a problem, actually, because you've got a pitch for Emma, don't you? Could be the next big thing. I can't wait. Well, I had no. this idea, Emma, that um, <laughs> it's a plastic football, you know, it's yeah. an ordinary plastic yeah. football with a chain on it, short chain, <gasps> and the chain has a, has a bath plug on the end, and you plug it in and your bath can never overflow because as the water rises, the plastic ball will float and pull the plug out. Listen, as a mother of four and with kids who like regularly, you know, flood things, I think it's a great idea. I mean, I mean, in, in, I'd invest. Yeah, I'm after... I mean, I'm um, about it. I'm after 800,000 and 10% <laughs> <laughs> You are. Can you, you imagine? Can go on tour now. You're <laughs> yeah. sorted. I would be so rubbish as a, as a dragon. <laughs> when I first tried on, you know, the umbrella hat yeah. that oh, fits yeah. on your head, I remember thinking, well, this is a game changer. That's, <laughs> that's it for handheld umbrellas now. They're finished. I Every, suggest, everyone I suggest you don't go on. No. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you can see Emma in Dragon's Den tomorrow at 8 pm on BBC One and iPlayer. That's... Now, Emma, you really believe in apprenticeships, don't you? Oh, I really do. I feel like I did so much work experience myself. And it's the same kind of thing. I have apprentices all through my businesses. I really do. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah, got really to. Important. And now then, Frank, you are not an apprentice anymore, my friend. No, because I, don't, you're looking... I don't have a comedy apprentice who I look after and bring up. You can train your son up. <laughs> why not? Uh, no, maybe I should. Because I, I hate should. all rivals. That's <laughs> why. <laughs> that is a great reason. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I should cut it out. Yeah, so you're on tour, 30 years of dirt. Yes. Looking back at your career, who was the first person who said, you're pretty funny, you should get into comedy? Well, um, incredibly, my dad, who worked in factories all his life, said to me, um, you need to get into showbiz, that's the, that's the way forward. He said, look, there's people, I won't name them, but he said, they don't have any talent, but they're making a great living on the telly, so that's, that's where you want to go. Yeah. Loads of I people, I think, did the same now. Here, <laughs> <laughs> We're all at home. Yeah, but he honestly, it's a weird thing for a working-class bloke to say, but he said, get... He banged the telly and said, get on this. Brilliant. That's the way forward. Well, you've obviously got loads of fans around the world, but your 11-year-old son isn't one of them, is that right? Well, he's a fan of mine, but recently he was watching the telly and there was an advert for an Alan Carr TV show. <laughs> he said, I really like Alan Carr. I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, I think he's funnier than you, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, now I know that kids say barbed, you know, yeah. things as you get old, but I didn't think it'd be that barbed or no. that too. <laughs> That's pretty it's cutting. Early. Oh, that it really, I haven't That'll slept. <laughs> um, look at me, I haven't slept. Well, but whatever he thinks, I mean, the tour has been a big success. Well, um, yeah, so I'm at the Gale Good Theatre in, in the West End tonight and yeah. for the next two weeks, and then I'm, from the beginning of March, I'm sort of everywhere. You sound a bit throaty. Are you OK? Yes, it's my new um, sexy voice. <laughs> it's lovely. On. I had a small operation on the throat to give me a bit more of a ooh baby. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, it's very good. It's very yeah. totally yeah. Working, yeah, working. Very good, Frank. Yeah. Now, you're going back to Birmingham, which is the, loca the location of your very first gig. Sorry, I thought, I thought I was being rehoused. <laughs> Not tonight. <laughs> yes, my first gig yeah. was for the uh, at the Birmingham Anglers Association Club. Yeah. And um, the first gig actually was terrible, but not as terrible as the second gig. The first gig, they just called an informal interval and people just sat talking and that while I was on going to the bar. The second one was a New Year's Eve night and... Um, they, they were all given little plastic trumpets to celebrate New Year's Eve and they blew them throughout my act. Rude. Yes, it was rude and oh. heartbreaking. Yeah, who's laughing now, Frank? Who's laughing who's now? Who's laughing now, Frank? <laughs> Thank you. And you've had brilliant reviews, but you don't read reviews, we know that. I don't read reviews, but I like people telling me I've had brilliant ones. <laughs> yeah. But the irony is you've got this brand new radio show and it's based completely on reviews. It's on online. It's about online reviews, yeah. And it's... Um, it's all actually it starts. It's, I'm the host, 
and we have comedians on, and then we talk about online um, reviews. And they all start by talking about a review, a bad review that they've had. Love it. Like, I had a review. This is not really bad, but I didn't understand it. It, it said, stand-up comedy at its very best, four stars. <laughs> That's got to be five, hasn't it? <laughs> but, yeah, so we, have, we look at um, all sorts of things being reviewed on the internet. Look, there's a woman, and uh, she's a woman hairdresser, and this guy really lays into her on a review. He says she's very indiscreet, don't tell her anything. And she answers back, the, the, hairdre the hairdresser. Yeah, what does she say? And she says, um, this is very unfair. And then she describes the man <laughs> in such detail, everyone will know who he is locally. And then she says, it was very horrible to criticise me. No wonder your daughter doesn't talk to you anymore. <laughs> She's Amazing. fairly indiscreet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very. And very quickly, the Poetry Podcast. Yes. Again, huge success. Ninth series. It's currently the ninth series. Can yeah, you um, believe? No. It's been I, going for this long. I really thought it would be like five people in spectacles. <laughs> and, um, and then I get stopped all the time. People saying, oh, I love your poetry. But, I mean, who would have seen that? You wouldn't have, you wouldn't have given I wouldn't me have money for that Absolutely on, not. if I'd have gone into <laughs> Dragon's Den with a poetry podcast. <laughs> We'd have been out. I'd have been well done. out of there, yeah. Uh, you can catch Frank performing his new stand-up show, 30 Years of Dirt, at London's Gielgud Theatre for the next two weeks, followed by a nationwide tour starting on the 12th of March. Uh, Frank's poetry podcast is available wherever you get your podcast from, and you can hear his new radio show, One Person Found This Helpful, good title, mm -hmm. at 6.30pm on the 19th of February, on Radio 4 and BBC Sounds. All right, thanks to tonight's guests, Emma and Frank, and of course to Matt for this week's Watch Ah, oh, Good luck tonight, Frank, with a voice as well. Good luck. Um, I'll be here with Lauren tomorrow, and joining us will be actors Cara Toynton and Jack Davenport. Have a lovely evening. Goodbye. Evening. Bye.